Hey everyone, Joe here. This is part four of the Mixing a Metal Song from Start to Finish series. This part I like to call micro mixing. It's where we're going to be diving in, uh, soloing each individual individual track and doing a basic mix. So getting rid of the, the nasty bits we don't want in there with EQ and smoothing things out with compression, get every, uh, getting everything sound sounding tight. We'll be giving everything its own space in the mix and getting everything really popping. So I'm going to start off with the drums, focus on, on the kick first, that's normally what I go for. Um, like I said, I'm going to be focusing on the individual instrument tracks, but I will be going back and forth listening to the mix as a whole as well, so we've got a bit of context. So let's just have a listen to the drums on their own first. They do sound nice and punchy already, um, sample drums, so very clean no bleed really. Um, now before I go into the individual drums I just want to put some compression on the drum bus just to tighten things up uh, and give things a bit of a punch. And don't want a huge amount of gain reduction. I'm just catching those peaks. Let's go into the kick now. So starting with an EQ, I'm just going to use the the seven band, the default EQ with Pro Tools. I just want to, I mean, it's a good EQ, and I want to show you that you don't need to be using expensive plugins all the time. I would cut out, cut out, um, I would high pass at about 30 hertz, but we've got that on the mix bus anyway. Um, and there's that, that kind of boingy boxiness in the middle. Around there, I don't really like, and I'm just gonna boost that low end straight away. We need a lot more low end punch on this. Around 60 hertz, so you can really feel it. Got a fair boost on that, and then we're always matching the output on the plugins because otherwise you when you're comparing between the two it's just going to sound louder and you don't want it to sound louder you just want to hear the difference that it makes and also it'll mess up with with our level balance so we'll balance the output so it's not affecting the overall level I'm going to use a, a low pass as well cut off some of that high end energy that we don't need and then around 8k or so, maybe 5 to 8k, you get that real clickiness just up there that you that you get with um, with metal drums, metal kicks. Let's hear that in context. I think we can do a bit more volume on the kick actually. Okay, that's sounding good. Now I want to put that through the 1176 clone compressor. I'm going to be comp compressing this quite hard again. I want it to sound real. Uh, give it some real smack. If I go too hard on the attack there, if I go too fast, it's going to be crushing those transients. It's a very fast acting compressor anyway, this one, but we don't want it to be immediate or it's not going to let the transient, that, that, that hit through at the beginning. And now this is one of my favorite plugins, R bass. It, it adds um, low frequency harmonics. It adds them on. So if you feel that something's lacking in bass, then this, this is really useful. Have a listen to the difference it makes. really add a lot of bass on but we don't want to go okay for now that's sounding good on the kick like I said for the for the micro mixing stage step four it's about mostly removing the the bits the, the bits that we don't want uh, and getting a, a basic mix of everything so it's mainly going to be EQ and compression getting everything sounding nice and, and clear um, once I get the bass in there 
I might do some extra little little EQ tweaks to sort of carve it around um, the base and make sure they're both cutting through. Let's go for the snare now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've duplicated the snare. It was sounding a little bit weak on its own, this sample. Not very metal, and obviously we're gonna mix it, but I think it needed something else. So I've duplicated it and I've, I've put trigger on the second track to trigger these uh, slate snare samples. So have a listen to this snare. So that's an extra sample that we can blend in with the original. It just sounds a bit trashier, a bit punchier. Um, but I'm going to EQ them both first. Anyway, let's start with the first one, with the original. I'm going to take a bit of that low end out with a high pass filter at around 60 hertz. And then again, get a bit of that doingy-ness, if that's a real word. Oh, there it is. Around 500 hertz. There's always a bit of that on snares. Bit more. Okay, and I'm going to compress it now. Again, let's go for the 1176. Okay, and then I'm going to add another. I'm going to do the additive. EQ after. Right, I want to take away that nasty sound that we don't want, then compress it, then EQ what we've got left. So the, the, the order of your plugins does matter, so consider that when you're applying plugins, what sort of effect you want to come first. Um, yeah, let's have a listen. I'm going to do the same thing with the other, with the other one first. Just turn these, these effects off first. These are DQ man. Okay, yeah, so we're going to cut that low out again. Um, yeah, this sample sounds good as it is, to be honest. Let's listen to it with the with the other one. Compress that too. Oh, a bit much. We can. This is coming in a bit hot. I'm going to adjust the, the level accordingly through trigger. Take a few dBs down so it's not hitting that compressor so hard. And now let's add them both. I think this this second snare, this trigger sample, is sounding quite full bodied, and I like that. I'm going to sort of capitalise on that. Add a bit of body. Base around um, the low mid, around well, it's exactly 200. We've got that, and then that snare's got that kind of that top end sort of crack. I think if we blend those together, so I added a high shelf on that as well, just to give it a bit of a bit of sizzle, uh, as you can see there, from around three. Let's have a listen with the kit kick now. Get a bit more snare. I'm group those. Now we've got two, so it's easier to. Yeah, sounding cool. Let's bring the um, overheads in. Okay. Get an EQ on that. We use a channel strip here, and this is affecting both overheads because it's a stereo track. This this Pro Tools channel strip is really useful. If you only need, if if you if you just want to use one plugin um, for something, you got the compressor in there, the the gate, and there are other channel strips that I like to use as well. But so so you can it's quite a visual um, with this. Uh, with this this layout, it's quite visual. You can see exactly what what's going on. Okay. I want to kind of 
compressed snare a fair amount on this because we've got that, those two snare tracks now, which is doing most of the heavy lifting on the snare. And take out most of the kick as well. Where's that snare? Quite a fast attack, so we're getting that snare. And some of the rest of the kit. Get a bit of brightness on those cymbals. Okay, it's sounding pretty punchy. Let's go for some toms. Again, not going to be cutting a huge amount of that low end because you do want want the bass in there with those toms, but still I want to give some room for the kick. Don't want it to start getting really muddy when, when the toms come in, so we are getting rid of some of that low end. Okay, so you can see I've also put the Kramer tape on this as well. There's a nice um, uh, preset that I start with that gives a little bit of bo extra body to the toms. Um, I don't like that resonance at the end. Uh, let's try and get rid of some of that. That kind of noise. There's a lot of it around, around here, around the low end, but I don't want to accentuate that. We might be able to gate gate that out, that resonance slightly. So obviously that's cutting some of the end of that off. And I think especially when we listen in context it's not going to be noticeable at all. Let's move on. Mm. Okay, what I'm going to do is just save on time and CPU is get another bus going for the toms which is going to go then through the drum kit bus and then the toms let's just say 13, 14, the toms are all going to go through through that tom bus so then what we can do is move that Kramer tape and the revival onto there so they're all going through it. And again, a little bit more. A little bit more body on that next rack tom. Okay, let's go to the floor tom. Again, don't want to doesn't want to be rumbling over that over that kick. So in fact we don't have I'm not gonna gate that because we don't have that nasty resonance. Okay, and then I'm going to put all three, all four, sorry. I'm going to compress those. And I want to make sure they're all the same level so they're hitting the compressor around the same amount. Let that transient through. Okay. 
cymbals and hi-hats. I'm going to be cutting out a fair amount of the low end up to about a couple of hundred hertz and then smoothing that out. There's something there I don't really like. And with the high, with the overheads, yeah, yeah, it's just giving it a nice um, boost there that the overheads isn't giving us for the uh, for the hi hat. And onto the ride, I'm just going to start off with the with the same settings as the hi hat. Yeah, again around the same place. What are those ambient mics doing for us? Yeah, you see, so it just gives that nice bit of ambience. It puts it in a room. Yeah, nice and punchy. Let's compare, compare with and without the plugins. Obviously, the snare is going to sound a lot different because we're uh, using that other sample, but... Yeah, a lot more punch, a lot more balance. Um, hearing things more clearly. Cool, let's bring that bass in. Okay. Now this is metal. I do want a bit of a bit of something on that bass. It's sounding a bit clean. It's nicely played, um, but it's sounding a bit clean. So first, let's get our EQ out. And I'm going to dial a bit of a low end off of that as well. Just the sub bass. It's not anything of value. We're just giving it a bit of, giving the kick some space. And then, I'm gonna bring that kick in actually. Because that's really where you can get some kind of muddiness when, when your kick and bass aren't working well together. Yes. Okay, let's bring, drop the 60k a little bit, which is where the um, the kick drum is sitting mostly. Cool. And a bit of the low mids around there, really nasty. So we can clean it up there a bit. And back a bit of that the very top end. Let's listen in context. Try to, try to Just take the vocals out for now. I want it to bite a little bit so we can really hear it over, over the guitar. Yeah, just that little 4 dB or so of around one and a half K um, is just helping it helping it to cut through there. Now I'm going to compress it again. I really like the 1176 on the bass. I have a preset of my own that I start with. So we're doing eight to one ratio, quite a lot of compression. It's quite dynamically played. around 3 dB gain reduction. Yeah, it's just taming it a little bit. So it's not quite so quite so dynamic. It's still got that dynamic playing. Um, and then I'm going to get that lovely R bass out again. To give it, give it a bit more body. 
cool. That's sounding nice. And then, like I said, I want a bit, a bit of grit on top of that, a little bit of distortion. And we're gonna go for the decapitator. As a wet dry control, this um, distor distortion plugin, so you can dial it in as much. It doesn't have to be be this sort of dark bassy distortion because again I'm going to mix it in with the original signal. That's half uh, the unprocessed signal and half the distorted signal. So yeah, it's just helping it cut, uh, sort of cut, up, cut its way through the, the guitars and everything. You get some compression first on on the bus, the guitar bus. The Renaissance X works really well with rhythm guitars, electric guitars. It's got auto makeup gain, so so we don't blow our heads off. I'm gonna reduce the gain beforehand. Okay, you got that twangy DI guitar. We're going to sort that out. Don't worry. Um, so this is just completely clean. Doesn't sound very metal, does it? So I'm going to put that through an amp sim. The the musician gave me the DI version as well, so that we can play around with tones. Yeah, that scooped metal tone. I'll listen to it with the other one as well. I'll put those back in the middle so we can... If if things are panned opposite each other, um, then you're not really getting a full picture on how well you're defining the... Um, how well you're defining the two tones because you have that separation, which is kind of cheating. So we're going to put them in the middle and listen to them like that first and then move them. I want more of the amp signal than the simulated signal. I think I might just use this to add some sort of brightness, really. Okay, so I'll just show you what I've done with the EQ here. Again, I've put the, the metal amp on, on the other side as well. Um, and yeah, so I've taken out some of the mid-range on both of these. And on the other side, I've adjusted, I've, I've sort of, for a bit of differentiation in the tone, I've added a little bit of mid-range. So when you've got those both together, they sound a bit more distinct. So if we listen to all four now, then we've got the compressor on the mix bus. Uh, turn, the, turn the left one down a bit to balance them. Okay, that's sounding good. I'd, I'd put a little bit of reverb on there uh, later, but we're just doing the, the basic mix first, and then we'll, in, in, in the next part we'll be doing wet-dry effects. Let's listen to all of that now. So we've got that context, and then work on the lead guitars, and then finally the vocals. Yeah. So we've cut... Cutting that below 80 has given us a fair amount of space in that low end. It's much less muddy now, listening to the rhythm guitars and the bass together. Whereas if we take the CQ off, it's harder to hear what the bass is doing exactly. It is more muddy. But this is giving the bass some space. Right, and then on to the lead guitar. Okay, so for these lead guitars, they're... They're the same guitar, 
Um, it, we're going to be mixing them exactly the same. It's just they recorded separately because it, uh, the first solo section overlaps the second. So let's turn this off and I'll show you what I've done uh, with the EQ and, com and compression. So again, we're just taking off some of the low end more than the rhythm guitar um, because we want it to cut through and and the the rhythm guitar and, and the bass is is giving us that low end energy. Um, and then this kind of mid-range sound I did didn't like taking that down a fair amount. And then didn't want to go too hard in the compression. Um, just smoothing out those peaks, not uh, relatively uh, relatively fast release. So yeah, we're just catching those peaks and not not squashing the dynamics of the thing. And then I want to get the level right going into the next bit. Cool. So this is going to sound awesome with some reverb on, maybe some delay. And then finally, the vocals. Two vocal tracks, um, doubled up. They, they're recorded two, two takes. Um, so I'm going to be processing them probably exactly the same. I'm going to get out this Neve style uh, EQ, and we can just work on the with with the bands try that we've to, got. Try to. Um, Catch me. So let's beware of fire. Take a fair I amount breathe. of that low end. Out. Press the pedal. Let go of fear. It's a great day to die away. No one, no longer. And then can ever beat my ass. Danger in veins. It's my cocaine. Get a bit of that low mid. Keep in mind. Your place is far behind, demon racer, got into death fight. And then try brighten to, things up try a bit. To catch me, beware of fire, I breathe. Press the pedal, let go of fear. It's a great day to die. Yeah, I like what this does for vocals, this EQ. Um, we've got a bit of that analog grit on there. Um, and and yeah around the the 270 or the 330 cutting a little bit of that off on this um on this eq feel is just just right for for kind of rocky metal vocals i find a lot of the time um and then probably my favorite compressor for vocals is the r comp nice and transparent try to try to catch Let's go me around beware four and a half to one ratio I breathe, press the pedal, let go of fear, it's a great day to die or win, no one, no longer. Cool. And then I'll copy that over. And then we've got these panned slightly left and right. I'm going to play with the panning later on, but for now, just to give them a bit of separation. Try to, try to. Catch me! Cool. And obviously we're going to be getting some reverb on on these. In fact, I'm going to do that now, just because with the vocals it does make a, a big difference. Getting it, getting the vocals in a in a room. Um, I do like a plate on my vocals, and be getting a a bit of a bit of distortion on the vocals, I think, as well. But I'm going to leave that until the next step. Try to, try to, so catch that me. Plate. It's on. Beware of fire, I breathe. Press the pedal, Let's put it on go the plate off. bus. And then we can send the vocals to that bus so we can dial it in that reverb. Try to, try to, catch me. Beware of fire. I breathe. Obviously, that's a bit too much. I'm going to get Press a bit the of the that low end. I do like to cut a bit of low end out of the reverb um, to keep things from getting muddy. And a bit of uh, pre delay makes the room sound bigger, makes it sound a bit more natural. Around 50 milliseconds. 
Try to, try to catch Listen me. Context. Beware of fire. I breathe. Okay, so that is sounding really cool. Um, that's the basic mix. We've done the micro mixing, um, basic mix of every track now. Let's have a quick listen to a before and after so you can see what, what difference it makes. Try to, try to catch me. Beware of fire. I breathe. Press the pedal. So yeah, obviously it's really starting to take shape now, a lot more punch. Um, you can hear that low end coming through, but it's, it's not quite so messy and muddy. We're getting more clarity in the mix now. So now we've done a basic mix of all the individual tracks. I reckon we're about 80% there now. It's sounding really good. The next part, part five, is called macro mixing. Where we're going to be focusing more on the mix as a whole, making some, uh, making some changes to get everything sounding cohesive together. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that one. And let me know in the comments section if there's anything at all that we covered in this video that you're still not quite sure about. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in part four.